Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Look at the word in St. John, the 11th chapter, beginning at the first verse. And the writer began saying, Now, a man was sick, mm -hmm. named Lazarus of Bethany, mm -hmm. the, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with the ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, his sickness Therefore, she sent unto him, saying, He who you love is sick. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus heard this, he said, This sickness is not unto death. Thank God. But for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified. Yeah. 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 Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister Mary mm -hmm. and Lazarus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus loved you. Yes, he does. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I, I want to pause right here and, and take a minute to say that all sickness is not unto death. In dealing with Jesus, you have to understand that who he is, he may not come when we want him, but he's always on time. And ain't that something to be glad about? Amen. Amen. And you, you see the scripture, you will see that Bethany wasn't too, too far from where Jesus was already. He could have yelled and someone in Bethany would have heard him. Amen. Because he was just that close. But when he got word that his friend Lazarus was sick, he still stayed where he was for two more days. Yes, yes. Praise God. Why? Because he knew that he had this. Yes, yes. Amen. And it's awful good to know when someone has your back. Amen. See, Jesus has someone that has his back. Mm -hmm. And we too today have someone that has our back. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We already have the victory That's right. in Jesus. That's right. Praise, God. Praise God. And all we have to do now is stand on what we have. Yes. Amen. See, the enemy don't want you to know who you are right. and what you have. Yeah. Praise God. But you already have the victory. Praise God. Praise God. Mm -hmm. For whatever may come against you, it's defeated yeah, yeah. in Jesus. Yeah. Praise God. And when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days where he was. Then after, after that, he told his disciples, say, listen, look, 
we got to go back into Judea. Yes. Now, now, his disciples had experienced something following him that they just didn't want to go back to. Him. They said, them Jews over there trying to stone you. And now you tell me you want to go back over there and mess with these people? That's true. Praise God. I can imagine old Thomas, the one called Twin. In his, in his mind, he's thinking, something must be wrong with you. We just escaped through there. And now you want to tell us that we got to go back over there? Come on, let's try to reason with you. Amen. He said, uh, Jesus uh, explained to him that Lazarus had fallen asleep. Lazarus, Jesus, Jesus, Thomas said, well, if he's sleep, he's doing good. We ain't got to go. See, he didn't want to go anyway. Praise God. And, and, Amen. They didn't really realize that Lazarus had died. So Jesus told them plainly, I was afraid Lazarus that he had died. And, but I'm glad that I was not there. For your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there. That you may believe. Praise God that, that he who sent me is with me. Praise God. Hallelujah. You see, sometimes Jesus brings us into a position in life to where he put us in a place to where other people around us can see what he's doing that will help them to believe in what you're saying that he called you to do. Praise God. I know that now. Praise God. Amen. So he he he, he kept on running there and got him going on and he explained to him about walking in the light and walking in the, in the dark. If a, if a man walketh in the night, he, he explained to them, he stumbles. Because there is no light in him. But if he walk in broad daylight, amen, he stumbles not because he sees the light of the world. Amen. Praise God. Jesus was concerned about, amen, the Jews doing something to him. He was on a mission. Amen. He had to show some people something that would help them to believe who he was. Amen. Praise God. And in doing so, I wish you guys, we got, but well, we're going to hurry on. We won't be long. Praise God, we, we're going to learn how to be obedient in 2016. Amen. Amen. I caught myself reminiscing over some stuff that um, I wasn't too kind, and I didn't do it intentionally. When you, when you get caught up in the spirit, you just forget about time. Yes, right. yeah. Amen. 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 So, praise God, God's thank you. Amen. It was a lot of concerned people waiting. Amen. At Mary and Martha's house. Yes, concerning the decease of their brother. Amen. And, 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 and I thought about this thing and I said, what a fine time. Amen. For Jesus to demonstrate who he is. Amen. Amen. At a great sight. To do the impossible. In the midst of unbelievers.
Because, see, I was dead. I was dead. And in sin, and on my way to hell. And I heard Jesus when he called me. Praise God. Yes. And it was so devastating until I wanted to hear it again.
never received a meal to this day. But Jesus always has somebody somewhere Amen. to lift you up when you down. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. He give you life when you get your worship. Yes. When Jesus got the message, the message said, Lord, Your dear friend is sick. When Jesus heard that the final result of his sickness will not be to death. That's, that's powerful. You see, the enemy thinks that just because he inflicted you with something that he's going to take your life. He don't have the power to do so. Amen. Jesus had the power from beginning to end. Yes, yes. Yes. Make no difference what they say you land up there on the hospital bed. If you can believe, yes. if you can believe, yes. amen, that God can do it, he said he would do it. Yes. And he will do it. going through something uncomfortable. Yeah. There's a lesson in it for somebody, if not your own self. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we need to learn how to endure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And we need to stop our complaints. Yeah. And just endure. Yeah. Because if we in it, Jesus is already in it. Amen. 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 And then she said, 
Even though I know now that whatsoever you ask of God, God will do it. That's something we have to take on that attitude. We need to know that whatsoever we ask, God will do that. A day has 12 hours in it. So if a man walked in broad daylight, he's down on night because he sees the light of the world. But if he walk during the night, he stumbles because there is no light in him. Now, you got to be careful with that. We're talking about doing right and doing wrong. You got to be able to analyze that quick. Praise God, because the enemy actually didn't come to do you no favor. The enemy came to kill you yes. and to destroy you. Yes. Amen. 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 How he gonna do that is any way he can lead you into a foolish situation. Yes. Yes. Amen. I know you've heard the term say, "What well, he just lost his life. She lost her life foolishly." Because you weren't thinking about who you were and what you were doing and who was doing it to you. She ran back into the house and told her sister. Mary said, the teacher is here and he's calling for you. So she jumped up and ran out to meet him. Now, the people in the house was, the Jews in the house who came to concerning her about her deceased brother, they, they hesitated and jumped up and went out to meet him to see what she was going. They thought she was going to the tomb there to cry for her brother. Praise God, but Nevertheless, amen, she went out to meet Jesus. And when she got to where he was, he had not yet came into the village. When he got to where he was, she too said, Lord, if, my, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Praise God. Jesus said to, her, to, to him, and added this, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. Praise God, but I'm glad, I'm very glad that I wasn't there for your sake that you may believe. Even he could have called this man Lazarus 
not to die. Then somebody said, well, he opened the blind man's eyes, didn't he? Praise God. Well, let's see. He, uh, for a minute, and he looked up toward heaven. And he called Lazarus by name. The scriptures say, called in a loud voice. Lazarus! Yes. Come forward now. Lazarus down into the dead world. He heard it. And no doubt that he knew who he was or recognized the voice. Amen. And there was noise going on down there. And he had to get their attention. He said, Hush! Somebody is calling my name. Yeah. Praise God. When, 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 when you know that God is calling you, praise God. Make no difference where you at. You don't have to be rude about it. But sometimes you just have to tell me to be quiet. Hush! Somebody is calling my name. Praise God. And, and he called him by name, and Lazarus, the dead man, came forth. Jesus wasn't satisfied when he saw it. He looked at it, and he was still wrapped in graveyard cloth, a napkin around his head. Praise God. Jesus said, loose him and let him go. You see, sometimes we we even got caught up with some things that hinder us and causes us to be separated from God. We have to pray and ask God to loose that thing yeah. and let us go. Yeah. We're coming into the beer world now. You know, football season is right upon us and, you know, you all want to taste the drinking and, and, and all these things here during the season of the football. But I tell you, you need to ask God to loosen that taste bud out of your mouth. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And put some holiness in there. Praise God. You can live without the beer. You can live without the wine. Praise God. And a better life without the alcohol. Praise God. God wants all of you God wants all of you. He wants all of your attention. Praise God. You can live without the drugs. The, the, the marijuana. You can live without that. Amen? But really, what you can't live without is Jesus. That's right. We're going to let you go. Praise God. You've been a very good listener. Praise God. When you think things have got you down or getting you down, just go to Jesus yes. and ask Jesus to loosen and let it go. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Don't you know if he called the dead man from dead, mm -hmm. amen, he can call your little habits out of your, out of your table. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Come on, put your hands together and tell God thank you. that Elder Mission just gave us in that 11th chapter of St. John, it has to deal with those that have lost something. Those that have lost the hope. Those that need to be found. Those that are around loved ones that suffer because someone has lost their way. It's all in that story that was preached to us this morning. There's someone in here this morning 
you may have given up on something and it's become dead to you. Just like Martha and Mary gave up on Lazarus thinking that he was dead. And I know this is true. I know this is real. Whether we want to admit it or not, someone in here may be looking at a situation and say it's dead to me now. It'll probably never happen again. The opportunity is lost. I just stand here and I believe in that. Because I believe Jesus can speak to any dead situation yes. and bring life Amen. to it. That's what this story is about. All of us have lost something or someone. And sometimes you hear it said that when I lost them, some of me went with them. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. When I lost that, I lost something in me also. But God is a God of restoration. God is a God that will bring hope in a hopeless situation. Mary and Martha had hopelessness that they will never see Lazarus again. But somebody said, call Jesus. Yes, yes. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. This morning, someone in here, for various reasons, need to call Jesus. Yeah. I want you to stand on your feet where you are. I want you to please those who can stand. I want you to stand on your feet. Because you all and I have have had losses. It seems like time with so many birthdays won't turn around and give me the dreams that I once dreamed about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, am I right about a church? Yeah. Come on now, come on now. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. You know it's true. Seems like time to pass by what I want it to do. Seems like I won't be able to get it done because I'm up against time. I've lost hope, yeah. but I know if I would have had the opportunity, yeah. I could have proved to myself that this thing that I lost, now I found, is good.
So anything that you have built up in your heart that man or stage have taken away when you're looking the face of God, there's hope again. Amen. There's belief again. Someone needs to hear that this morning. Hope again. Yeah. Yes, thank God for what Elder Mason preached. Yeah. There is hope again. Yeah. And some of us will see these things that we've lost hope in. I got something this morning. Amen. I'm hoping for. Do you have something you're hoping for? You got something you're still hoping for? Amen. And it seems like this thing I'm hoping for has battled me so long. But you know what? I got a picture that my wife found. She said, look at that. And I put it up in my office, and I look at that picture. And y'all know what I see on that picture? A flat stomach. <laughs> a flat stomach. I see a flat stomach. And you know what? My wife said, take that picture up there and let it help be motivation for what you're hoping for. Oh, it may be a funny thing, but it's real to me. Y'all can laugh at it, but it's real to me. This is real to me. I'm in this fight. Can y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm going to see this before I leave this earth. She said, take a picture of it. But what did that picture do? That picture made me look back. Just like this word makes you look back. somebody else and say, Lord, if you've done it for them, do it for me. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, do it right now. He'll do it for you. Yes. See, now, I got that picture when I was in college. Oh, I look good. <laughs> I look good. I felt good. And I said, Lord, all things are possible. Yes. But see, when you start walking and living and letting 30, 40 years go by, things get a little bit harder. Am <laughs> I right about it? Yeah. I used to get to take two weeks to go to the gym, flatten out what? Poked out. Yeah. Now I take two weeks to even try to get to the gym. <laughs> but I'm going to be with Jesus. So I found out that some of the things that we are hoping my brother and my sister, we really do need Jesus. Yeah. Now, in the natural, 30 years ago, I could chip this better with no problem. But 30 years of life has beat me down, and habits have beat me down. And I tried, and it almost worked. I tried, and it didn't work. Am I talking to somebody in this church today? It's somewhere along the line, you know what I did? I gave up hope, and I ate and took it down. And I ate and took it down. And before I knew it, what I used to control is now controlling me. But I thank God for Jesus. He said, son, hope again. Yeah. You all know what I'm saying? And this is what Jesus is saying to each and every one of us. Son, daughter, hope again. Yeah. Don't you give up on what you thought you may have lost or what you may never get. Hope again. Yes. I hope my testimony likely is helping you think about something. I don't want to carry this. But somebody in here today the way I'm carrying this naturally, you can be carrying something spiritually and it can be just as heavy. You don't want to partake of it, but you're in life. I have to eat. So every time I eat, it challenges my weight. But I got to eat. You don't want to go out and be in the world and deal with the sinful things and the people of the world. But you got to live. Right. You got to go on. You got to keep moving. Yes. Oh, it'd be nice to say, Lord, I'm saying, let me stay in this room till you come back, Jesus. But it don't work like that. Yeah. You got to keep on living. Yeah. So if your weight is spiritual, yes. you need a burden bearer. Yes. Right. And the Bible said Jesus was a burden bearer. Yes. He took our weight and he put it on his shoulder that we can walk by him. Yeah. To let every weight and sin that he's in the sadness, let it be cast off. Yeah. Well, I'm going somewhere when I'm talking about Brother Charles. The 
enemy over the course of years yes. has said things to us, has done things to us, yes. has caused us to do things to us, and caused us to do things to others. That's yes. held us back and made us lose hope. But I want to say today from the preach word, there is hope. There is hope. And our hope is in God. Through Jesus, right here. And I don't know what you mean this morning. And I've always been transparent. Since I made up my mind to get this down, before I hear anything, I said, Lord, please don't let me overindulge. Control what I've lost control of. So we're going to pray that prayer for each and every one of us. First of all, is there anybody here that don't need anything from God? You got everything and you're all right? I didn't think so. I'm going to check it. So brothers and sisters, whatever your situation is, we're going to pray together. That Lord, you take that weight that the enemy put on us because we're just living. Yes. We're just living. But we live in a weighty world. Yes. Stuff going on. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we all acknowledge that there's things that this life has presented to us yes. that's hurt us, yes. damaged us, caused us to lose hope. But from your reading today, dear God, as Mary and Martha lost hope, they did come to you, Lord. And you told them that I can resurrect anything that's died. Lord, some of us have let some things die, not believing we could ever get them. But Lord, turn our minds and give us a focus that we can have just what you desire us to have. Yes. If there's anyone here today that's smitten with sin, help them overcome it, Lord, yes. by the blood of the Lamb. Yes. If there's any depression, let them see the light of Jesus, yes. who is the light of all men. Yes. If there's any heartache, dear God, unforgiveness, heal that heart so that we can forget yes. and move forward. Let nothing bind us that was bound on Lazarus' body even though he was alive. Yes. Yes. He still came out bound up. Yes. Yes. Loose us, Jesus. Loose him today, Lord. Loose Jesus. Loose us today. Yes. Even though we're alive, we can still be dead and bound up. Yes. Loose us, Lord. And give us the freedom to walk about yes, in the spirit of your son. Yes. Oh, loose today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, and we say amen. amen. And amen. amen. Somebody give God some praise. Thank you, Jesus. You may have your seats. You may have your seats in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, my God. Hallelujah. Loose us. I want you to bring that calm and cold. To Jesus. Yes. Elder Nixon says about sickness is not for the saints of God. See, the world call it a common cold. And Sister Lori is suffering from what the world says a common cold. But it's still sick. Peter's mother-in-law had a common headache and a fever. Yeah. And Jesus cared about that. Because he knew that Peter's mother-in-law had things to do. Yeah. Sister Lori got a job. She got to go to work healthy. Am I? She just got this job. She's been working it. The enemy been trying to fight against Sister Lori. Amen. Scheduling her on Sunday. Do you see the spiritual thing now? Oh, it was a mistake. Oh, you told me I wasn't supposed to work on Sunday. Right. Had us working on Sunday. She had to confront them about that. So now the enemy trying to keep her from work by giving her a cold. Oh, we got to see past the natural and see the spiritual. This is him trying to block your assignment. You see that. 
See, if we see with this, oh, give us some ad videos, you'll be all right in the morning. So now I'm saying, the devil is alive. This is deeper than that. So when it gets deeper than that, that's when the church comes alive. Yeah. Now I want you to pray with me for Sister Lloyd like she has cancer for this cold. And we're going to believe God, Sister Lloyd, to go in there and dry up whatever influenza, whatever down in there, and make you well. Brothers and sisters, we can't believe Jesus will come because we sure can't believe him for delivering us out of some other stuff. Amen. Now I know this church got more faith to be able to rebuke a common cold. And y'all have seen some things in this church. You know you have seen some things in this church. Take a look up on that uh, altar right there. There's canes. There's all kind of things up there. Pill bottles, uh, lottery tickets, all kind of stuff. This is a sniff. This is the light thing in the house of the Lord. Do you believe that Jesus can take away what we call common? See, what we call common in the body of Christ ain't common. We're not supposed to be sick. Amen. If your faith understands that, because why did Jesus say, well, you're sick, I'm going to give you power to lay hands on the sick. He had something against sickness. Yes. Am I right about it in this church? Amen. Come on, step over, sister. Well, we're going to lay hands today, and we're going to believe yes. just what the Word says. Church, you're going to pray for your sister? Amen. You're going to pray like it's your last Amen. time praying for your sister? You're going to join in and believe that she needs to be at work because where she works at, those elderly people in that nursing home will look for her Amen. because she brings them a love and she brings them a hope and she brings them gentleness? You think the enemy don't want them? No. But God's going to heal her so when she goes to work tomorrow, if she's scheduled, she's going to walk in there like she had never been sick before. Man. That's the type of faith I'm talking about. Yes. That's the type of empowerment yes. that I'm talking about in the church. Yes. All right, we're going to pray. The Bible said, you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. I just happen to believe that. And then James just says, let the prayer church pray that you may be healed. Lift your hands up to Jesus. Just lift them up. There you go. Turn them this way and receive them. Turn them like that, that you're just receiving all of his healing, flowing from the throne of grace. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray right now, right now that you would meet that cold at its very root, the Heavenly Father, and begin to eradicate it, move it out the way, bind, rebuke it, that it come back no more, dear God. In the name of Jesus, you said that when we stand, believe everything that we ask for, and we believe in the Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that this cold will dissipate and be rebuked and be removed so she can get back to her sign that you gave her to work with these elderly ones in the nursing yeah. home. That she can continue to show your love, your compassion yeah. in the name of Jesus in the midst of those in whose hearts are broke and have lost hope. Yeah. Dear God, in the name of Jesus, our church family prays yes. that you would heal Sister Lord from what we call a common hope. Bind it in the name of Jesus and rebuke it out of her body, Lord. Let it come out to Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Heal her to Heavenly Father and let her go to work, dear God. In the name of Jesus. As she's never been sick, dear God. In this we are expected. We are expected in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody give God Somebody give God Thank you, Jesus. In February, I'm going on a series. So the Lord delays is coming. The Elder Hooper have an opportunity to speak the third. You have an opportunity to speak the fourth. And I got the rest. So I'm saying it open. That's the preachers of the brother. They ain't done nothing but God put me on a series. We get ready to see a little bit more of the empowerment of what God can do. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? God put me, he put me on a mission. He put me on a mission. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Who's up in here right now? This is honesty time. This is honesty time. Be honest. Ain't nobody in here judging you. We too busy dealing with our own stuff to be going home talking about you. Hmm. I ain't no time to talk about you. Pray about you, but talk about you. No, that's so loud, I'm just who in here, let me be honest, you, eh, you kind of lost hope. Kind of lost hope. Just ain't as strong on that issue as 
that I used to be. And I'm looking at it in a different way. I know God is good, but on this subject, I have kind of lost hope. Raise your hand. Okay. Yeah. See, God knows nothing in vain. We don't even know what it is, but come here. God knows what it is. See, this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about signs, miracles, wonders, the gift of the Holy Ghost going forward. Amen. See, God didn't want Brother Tad to leave. You know what I'm saying? He said, it was somebody that lost hope. But Tad said, I'm going to be honest with God. I lost it. But God said, son, I know where it's at. I know where it's at. I know where it's at. Just what you're looking for, I will shine the flashlight on it that you can hope again. And for you to say it the way you said it, and a lot of people don't want to admit it, they have been beat down. When you really want to say, I lost hope, that's a lot. And most people got pride to get in the way of admitting, yeah, awesome. But son, today God said, well, you let all your pride go. And you just said, I need you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. I need you. What a wonderful God. Yeah. He's going to give that to you. Come on over here. Yeah. I'm not asking what it is. But when I'm praying what it is, you'll find it. You, you trust God in Let's pray for this young man, brothers and sisters. Father, in the name of Jesus, he acknowledged today the Heavenly Father, but through this life, the things that he used to dream about and see himself doing and in, the enemy has stolen it. And he lost hope. But dear God, even though he come to steal, kill, and destroy, he only got one out of the three. He didn't kill it, and he sure enough won't destroy it. He just stole a little bit of the property that you promised him. And Lord, we're asking for you to give it back yes. to Tad today, Lord. Let him see himself again. Yes. Looking at this, handling this, and doing this, Lord. Let that hope that he told nobody that was just dissipating, let it come again, Lord. In the name of Jesus, yes. by hope, dear God, it will increase his faith. Yes. And by faith, He'll see his hope come to truth. Yeah. And we pray for him today, Lord, that the enemy has no way of touching this new hound, this new found hope in Christ Jesus. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hope we yeah. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody yeah. say amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let me ask this question, and I'm going to my seat. If you're here today and you're not born again or saved, Or you really know, as I always say, you can go to heaven from this church. You can go to heaven from this church. Because I'm going to talk about heaven. And I'm sure I'm going to talk about hell. And we're not going to play with heaven or hell. If you're here and you're not born again, you, you haven't repented of your original sins, would you want to be saved this morning? If you're here, and you know you started this off heel and toe, but the cares of this life begin to choke that, and you begin to drift, you begin to drift, do you want to get back to the center of your walk, the perfect will of God? Is that in the house today? And I'm saying praise God. Yeah. I'm saying praise God. I have to ask. I would never ever Take the service for granted. Because we don't know what people go through right, right. before they get back the next week. Right. The most profound saint in this body right here may have caught hell all week right. and slipped up and cussed out everybody. Mm -hmm. It can happen. Yeah. Amen. But we give that opportunity. They didn't lose their soul, but they lost something. Yeah. They say, I just want to stand in the house of God and regain that. Yeah. That's why I do what I do. Yeah. That's ministry. We don't take nobody's soul for granted. But we thank God for that. Sister Yvonne, can you get our uh, basket of hope out of the office? Sister Yvonne, can you get our basket of hope out of the office? Our basket of hope out of the office. We're going to have an offering. Brothers and sisters, just want to call. We're getting ready to leave. I want you to come back to all souls by your Christ.
There's a series that God is getting ready. He has a given that he's gave it to us. I want to preach us through it. Deal with fruit. I want to preach us through it. Do what you got to do. We'll be here when we come back. Let's say amen. Amen. Elder Hooper, I want you to pray over our offering and get it straightened out. And I want to thank God for those that made it into the church today. You could have passed by and drove by every church and kept on going and missed us too. Thank you for coming here. God is good. God is not done with all souls' body of Christ, brothers and sisters. He's nowhere near done with it. All right? This basket that you see here coming, Brother Tim, I'm going to ask you to help us with the offering.